Hello everyone. I am Lokesh, working as an assistant professor in Department of Physics, Maharaj Institute of Technology, Mysore. So in this session, we are going to discuss uh, regarding the amplitude of the force vibration and its phase dependency upon the relative values of P and omega. So as we have seen in the previous session, we have derived uh, the amplitude uh, equation as well as the phase equation for the forced oscillations. So we had uh, went in di and discussed what, is, what are forced oscillations and we had derived a differential equation for forced oscillation also as well as we have found out the equations for amplitude as well as the phase difference. So we know that the amplitude of the forced oscillation is given by f by m square root of omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square and the phase of the forced oscillation is given by theta is equal to tan inverse of 2bp divided by omega square minus p square whole square. Now in this session we will see how the amplitude as well as the phase varies depending on the values of the frequency of the applied force and the natural frequency of the oscillating body where um, uh, p is the frequency of the applied force and omega is the natural frequency of the oscillating body. So depending upon the va uh, variation of the uh, values of p and omega three cases arises. So we will start with the first case, the case wherein the driven frequency has less value or driven frequency is lower. Driven frequency means or the frequency of the applied force is less than the frequency, very much less than the frequency of the, less of the oscillating body. So what happens, uh, let us see if the frequency of the applied force is very, very much less than the frequency of the oscillating body. Now as you can see, if I consider the value to be very small, the value of p to be very small. So as per se, we can say uh, the value of p square is very small, then we can say that in, the, in this equation, omega square minus p square is nearly equal to omega square. Since the value of p square is very, very small, uh, very negligible, what happens is that if I go on substituting the value, values of mathematical values for p, uh, since it becomes p square, the values of p square goes on getting reduce, goes on getting reducing as we go on in, uh, substituting the values, uh, very infinite decimal values or very negligible values. So we can say that the whole value of omega square minus p square is nearly equal to omega square. So what happens if the whole this omega square minus p square value becomes nearly equal to omega square? Then we know that the amplitude of the forced vibration or forced oscillation is given by a is equal to f by m divided by whole square root of o minus omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square. Then if I substitute the value of this omega square in this equation and say p square is very small or value of p is very small then the amplitude of the forced oscillation uh, is given by uh, f by m divided by square root of omega square whole square because this whole uh, value becomes omega square and p square is negligible this whole value becomes also equal to 0. So it becomes Simplified version becomes A is equal to F by M omega square. Now this is the, what we are going to get the amplitude of the forced oscillation whenever the value of uh, the applied for frequency is very much less than the natural frequency of the oscillating body. So A is equal to F by M, M omega M omega square. Now let us see what happens to the phase of the phase of the forced oscillation. Now we know that the phase of the forced vibration or oscillation is given by theta is equal to tan inverse of 2 bp divided by omega square minus p square. Now since the value p value has very negligible value or p has very negligible value means the applied frequency value has very negligible value we can say uh, the whole uh, 2 bp uh, 2 bp divided by omega square by minus p square whole becomes equal to 0 so tan inverse of 0 is equal to 0. So theta becomes equal to 0 uh, what does it mean? So it means that there is no uh, lag or phase difference between the displacement and the applied force. Applied force and displacement both are in phase and what happens to amplitude? Here the amplitude does uh, only depends on the magnitude of applied force as well as the force constant. So as you can see this is the magnitude of the applied force, this is the amplitude or the magnitude of the applied force and uh, f by m becomes the force constant. So the whole value of amplitude depends on only these two terms. The amplitude depends on the magnitude of applied force as well as the force constant and it is independent of the frequency of the applied force. Okay? Uh, this is regarding what happens when the driven frequency or the frequency of the applied force is very much less than, uh, than the value of the oscillating body. See, in the second case, in the value of driven frequency is 
is equal to frequency of oscillating body so that is p is equal to omega now we are seeing in the second case where when the value of the driven frequency or whenever the driven frequency means the frequency of the applied force is equal to the frequency of the applied oscillating body mathematically we can say when p is equal to omega then what happens to the amplitude so amplitude that uh, the equation of the amplitude is given by a is equal to f by m whole divided by square root of omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square now uh, we are saying that when the, uh, the value of p becomes equal to omega means the amplitude of applied frequent driven frequency is equal to the frequency of the oscillating body so we can write then omega square minus p square is nothing but omega square minus omega square is equal to 0 and so this therefore we can write a is equal to f by m divided by we are left uh, the first term becomes equal to 0 we are only left with the second term this is 4 b square omega square square root so this is nothing but f by m this is 2 b omega whole square square root the root and square get, the root and square gets cancelled so f by m divided by 2 b omega so this is what happens uh, to the amplitude when the amplitude when the value of the driven frequency is equal to the frequency of the oscillating body the amplitude the value of omega the first term in the denominator becomes equal to zero and the second term we are left with the 4 b square omega square so the final the amplitude is given by amplitude a is equal to f by m divided by 2 b omega now let us see what happens to the phase so the phase of the oscillating body is given by theta is equal to tan inverse of 2bp divided by omega square minus p square. Now, since p is equal to omega, so theta becomes tan inverse of 2b omega divided by omega square minus omega square. So, theta is equal to tan inverse of 2b omega divided by 0 theta is equal to tan inverse of in 1 by 0 is infinity or theta is equal to pi by 2 okay. so what does this uh, mean what is the amplitude f by m o m 2b omega and theta is equal to 0 uh, pi by 2 means now as you can see here and the amplitude of the oscillating body is again is depending on the value of the applied force here the amplitude of the oscillating body is f by m is nothing but the the amplitude of applied force divided by the mass so amplitude of the oscillating body depends on the amplitude of applied force and inversely depends on the the value of b or the damping factor and here in the case of the displacement as well as the amplitude of the applied frequency the displacement lags behind the applied force by a phase of pi by 2. So the displacement lag behind the applied force by of angle of pi by 2. Now in this case of amplitude where uh, the angle of uh, the value of p is equal to omega. So this is a special case wherein we call this case as the resonance. The resonance is wherein the applied frequency is equal to the natural frequency of the oscillating body. So because of that what happens is that the amplitude becomes maximum amplitude of the oscillating body becomes maximum. The case wherein the frequency of the applied force is equal to the frequency of the oscillating body 
uh, if that is called as the resonance and the amplitude becomes f by m divided by 2 by omega and the phase becomes equal to pi by 2 means the displacement lags behind the uh, lags behind the applied force by a phase of pi by 2. Now this is the second case when the driven frequency is equal to the frequency of the oscillating board. Now in this case 3 we will say that when the value of the driven frequency is more than the frequency of oscillating body that is the value of p is very much greater than omega. You know that the amplitude is given by f by m divided by square root omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square. Saying that the value of p is very much greater than omega then omega square minus p square whole square is nearly equal to minus p square whole square is e to the power of 4. And in the case of the second term 4b square p square, now if you consider the value of uh, p square and b square, here in the first term we got the value of uh, uh, p to b to the power of 4 and here we are comparing the com we are comparing the value of 4b square p square to that p to the power of 4. When you compare this value here in this term the value of the whole value depends on the value of b square that is the damping factor. So we can say 4b square p square is less than p to the power of 4. So the whole amplitude is given by amplitude a is equal to f by m divided by square root of we can write a is equal to f by m p square. Now this is the amplitude we are going to get whenever the frequency of the applied force is very much greater than the natural frequency of the oscillating body. So it is given by a is equal to f by m p square. Here again we can see that the amplitude of the oscillating body completely depends on the value of the applied force or the amplitude of the applied force. Now let us see what will happen to the phase of the forced oscillation. The phase is given by theta is equal to tan inverse of 2 b p divided by omega square minus p square. So we can write this as theta is equal to tan inverse of uh, omega gets neglected. This becomes minus 2 b p divided by p square uh, theta is equal to tan inverse of 2 b p or 2 b divided by p. p square and p gets cancelled. This is minus. Now again as you can see here the value of uh, theta or the phase completely depends on the value of p. Uh, since the p has uh, p is having a very greater value. So we can say this has tan inverse of minus of 0 or theta is equal to phi. Okay. If I compare the consider the value of b to be very small because here the value of p is much more when compared to the value of b. So we can say 2b is nearly equal to 0. So this becomes tan inverse of, of minus 0. So theta is equal to pi. So we can say that the phase of pi is existing between the 
applied force and oscillating body. Okay. There exists a phase of phi between the applied force as well as the oscillating body means there is a phase difference of angle of 180 degree between the applied force as well as the oscillating body. Now what is resonance? Resonance is the condition wherein the frequency of the applied force is, uh, becomes equal to the frequency of the oscillating body. So such a condition we call it as a resonance. So what happens when this condition arises and what happens to the amplitude as well as the phase of the oscillating body when this condition takes place. Now already we have seen already we have seen that in the previous case in the cases where we had discussed when the frequency of the applied force is equal to the frequency of the oscillating body what happens to the amplitude and what happens to the phase. But here especially we are going to discuss what are the conditions which are required for the body to undergo resonance or what are the conditions uh, which are required for the oscillating body to be in the resonance condition. So I repeat resonance is a condition wherein the frequency of the applied force becomes equal to the frequency of the oscillating body. The frequency of the applied force is equal to the frequency of the oscillating body. Then, addition is called resonance. Now, let us see uh, what are the conditions which are needed mathematically in order to get the body to be under resonance. We will consider, we know that the amplitude of the oscillating body is given by f by m divided by square root of omega square minus p square whole square plus 4b square p square and phase theta is equal to tan inverse of 2bp divided by omega square minus p square whole square. Now theoretically what are the conditions uh, which are needed for the resonance? Conditions for resonance. The frequency of the Light force must be equal to frequency of the oscillating body that is delta of p must be equal to omega. So this is the first main condition for the resonance. The frequency of the applied force must be equal to the frequency of the oscillating body. And the second main condition for the resonance to take place is, is depending on the value of p. The value of b is equal to r by 2m must be very less. So these are the two main important conditions for the resonance to take place. Now in the case of resonance apart from uh, having a, uh, apart from having the amplitude value as well as the phase value 
Here, whenever the resonance takes place, the amplitude of the oscillating body becomes maximum because since I said the value of B is uh, very negligible here, the value of B should be very much less value. Okay. So these are the two conditions for the resonance. Now, in the next session, we will see what is the mathematical equations or what is the mathematical expressions which are needed for the resonance talker. Thank you.